Welcome to Sequoia. In this introduction video, we'll take a look at the very basic steps to go from a point cloud to a mesh. In the main toolbar, the green icons create various types of objects and the first object that we're going to create is a point loader. The point loader is responsible for reading the various file formats that Sequoia supports and in our case we'll pick an E57 file which will be previewed in the viewport However, Sequoia requires us to use its own SPAT cache in order to access the data much faster. So the first step after picking a uh, point source is to convert it to the SPAT file format if uh, no such file exists yet. All we need to do is press the Build SPAT Cache button and this will read the source file will sort the points and store them uh, specially organized and well compressed into the SPAT file. Once this is done, we'll be able to read the points much faster. While the conversion is going on, we can actually still navigate the viewports, create new objects, even work in other documents. Everything happens uh, in the background using asynchronous tasks. So now we have the point cloud loaded and it offers various levels of detail. We can create a measure in order to turn this uh, point cloud to a mesh. Since the point load is already selected, when we click the third icon, which creates a new measure, the point loader will be automatically added as a point source to be meshed. So we don't even need to pick manually. And all the settings are already preset to plausible defaults, including the radius of the measure, which is set right now to 5.5 millimeters, based on the average spacing of the point cloud. All we need to do is press the update mesh button, and this will read the point cloud, it will mesh it, and then it will run a core components operation, which removes any detached segments that have less than 1000 faces. We can watch the asynchronous task in the task manager. After the meshing is done, the core components operation will run in a second progress here. And then the mesh will be sent to the viewport, first the vertex cloud and then the polygons. At this point, the mesh and the point cloud are being displayed at the same time in the viewport. So if we wanted to disable the display of the points in order to see only the mesh, we can click the toggle points display icon and this is the dynamically lit uh, mesh that was generated from that point cloud. In order to see the original vertex colors that came from the point colors, we can also disable the dynamic lighting and now we're displaying only the colors that are stored in the mesh. To see what the density of the mesh is, we can enable the wireframe display and you notice that it still appears very much solid because it's very, very dense. If we uh, zoom in, we'll see how dense it actually is. We have created 10 million uh, polygons out of 7 million points. In a later video, we'll take a look at the ability of the measure to reduce this uh, polygon count in order to make uh, the data more usable in other applications.